one of the nice things that has happened since I've retired is I, I switched from Livingston County up to Genesee County, where I am much more anonymous, <laughs> which is good. And you know, the other thing is, is that because I'm retired, I, I, I don't do the priestly stuff all the time. So, you know, most of the time I, I don't wear black, the clerical, you know, it's just kind of, I do it when I'm coming over for liturgy or when I'm doing some other priestly function. But otherwise, I tend to dress in regular clothes, you know. It typically is jeans and a sweatshirt or a hoodie or t-shirt. Not, not very well dressed, but that's okay, you know. It's one of the nice things about being retired. And also, you know, it, it is one of those things that I, I tend to be pretty anonymous. People don't notice me all the time. You know, it isn't like the old days. It works pretty well, except for one time I <laughs> was waiting for cataract surgery back during COVID restrictions. And I was the only one in the waiting room because nobody else could come into the surgical center. And, and I dressed comfortably for that morning. I wore black sweatpants and a black sweatshirt. I didn't think when I got dressed that morning that I, you know, all in black, but that's okay, it matched, so that was, I was good, you know. If you wear the same stuff all the time, your color coordination doesn't quite always work. So, and I had taken my jacket off and hung it up, but I, for whatever reason, this was December, I had left my Advent purple scarf on. And I was waiting there because there was a delay and I was reading my Kindle and this guy comes out and walks through and goes and does something and then comes back again. Well, I finally get called back. And when I get back there, it's my anesthesiologist. And he said, oh, I saw you sitting there in the waiting room and you look like a priest waiting to hear a confession. <laughs> and I said, I am, and are you ready? <laughs> he, he, he was a little disconcerted at that moment, but, you know, otherwise I'm pretty anonymous, except for, of course, when I laugh. That has proved to be problematic over the years because I've been in stores and laughed and people have tracked me down, you know. <laughs> I've had people say, oh, I knew you were coming into my hospital room because I heard you laugh down the hall. Or, you know, the funniest one was I was on vacation in Honolulu in a museum. And I was there with a friend and we were looking at something or he said something, I don't know what it was, but I laughed. And just a couple of minutes later, this couple came around the corner. They were parishioners at the parish that I was serving in at the time. And they said, we knew you were here because we could hear your laugh. <laughs> you know? So that, that doesn't help. But, but otherwise, I'm pretty anonymous. And I mention that because we hear in the gospel John revealing who Jesus is. You know, it's an interesting thing that, you know, Jesus was pretty anonymous through most of his life. We, we don't know much about those first 30 years of his life. We have in Matthew and Luke stories of his birth. And except for one incident when he's around 10 or 11, we don't know what happened during those 30 years until suddenly he appears on the scene and begins his ministry. You know, and... and Jesus has been pretty anonymous up to that point. And then all of a sudden, John said, look, there he is. He's the one. He's the Lamb of God. That's the one we've been waiting for. You know, I've been talking to him. That's the one. And all of a sudden, all the attention turns on him. He has no more anonymity. You know, all of a sudden, he's very obvious to people. And he begins his ministry, and he goes from village to village, preaching in the synagogues. But then there are miracles, and the crowds grow. You know, the blind see, the lame walk. And the crowd is fed with an abundance of bread. 
you know, and the crowds keep growing and growing, and there is no anonymity now. There is no place to hide, you know, and it's very obvious. In fact, he can't even go into the towns and villages anymore because there are just too many people. No, there, there is no anonymity. And yet I wonder if he missed that. You know, we know that, especially in Luke's gospel, Jesus kept stealing away and he would go off by himself to pray. He just needed to be alone with his father. You know, and, and we know that at least in one incident in John, he sent his disciples on down to Jerusalem for a festival, and he didn't go with them, supposedly, but actually went down there secretly only to be discovered in the temple. Uh, it was kind of hard for him to be anonymous. You know, up till John revealed who he was, Jesus lived kind of an ordinary life. The only things we know about him is that he worked as a carpenter for a while and he lived in Nazareth. Nothing else. That's it. We can guess, surmise that, you know, obviously he was a pious Jew and so he didn't look any different than anybody else. You know, we, we have this image of Jesus where he glows in the dark and maybe even had trouble sleeping because of the halo, you know. But that wasn't the case. You know, he looked ordinary. He didn't look any different from any other Jewish male of his time. He didn't dress differently. He just fit into the crowd the whole time. He was very anonymous. You know, we know that he was pious. He studied the Torah and Scripture because he knew it very well. But we don't know anything about that hidden life. And I wondered if he missed it. Don't know. You know, you and I are pretty anonymous here. You know, the, the reality is, is that the people that came today, well, you know, I'd like to say that, that, that people come, you know, for me, but I know that's not true, <laughs> you know? I, I'd like to say I draw a crowd because, you know, people come because of me. But, I, you know, the only time that happens is at Christmas and Easter. And I know I'm not the reason they come. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not that foolish. You know, none of us in this room are famous or infamous. None of us are, are notable or even notorious. We're ordinary folks. You know, there, there's no crowd out there waiting for us to come out. You know, the only one that is really taking notice that we're here, the only one that's delighted to see us is the Lord himself. You know, does that mean we're not special? No, no, we are all special to God. There is no doubt in my mind about that. But to say we're no, notable, notable that you know, we're famous, we're not. We're ordinary people and pretty anonymous. There are no paparazzi out there waiting to take our picture, you know, to show the rest of the world that you were at church this Sunday. That ain't true. And that's okay. We don't need that. I don't think we need that. I would never want that kind of notoriety. But there is a problem if we are too anonymous. You know, if you and I, when we're in our car, drive in a way that, you know, is not kind to others, is not respectful of others. If we drive recklessly, if we, we use our car almost as a weapon, then, you know, really? You know, if you and I are so anonymous that people don't see in us signs of faith, there's a problem. If there is no concern for the poor and the needy and those who live at the edges of society, if we don't have that in our lives, then perhaps we're too anonymous. If you and I don't have a concern for justice in this world, if we don't care 
about the racism that affects our society, if we don't care that people aren't lifted up but pushed down and oppressed, if we don't care about that, if we don't care about what's happening in our world, if we don't care about what's happening to this earth, then my brothers and sisters, how are we different from the rest of the world? How are we different from the rest of our society? Maybe we are just too anonymous. And that's a problem. I'm not saying that you have to go around wearing a scapular on the outside of your shirt or your jacket. I'm not saying you have to hang a big gold crucifix around your neck so that people can see. You don't even have to carry around a Bible. I'm not suggesting that we do those things, but I am suggesting that we act in this world as if we did. Because unless there are some people who can point to us and say, look, there goes a real Christian. There goes a true disciple of the Lord Jesus. If people can't see that in us, my brothers and sisters, then we're just too darn anonymous.